Welcome to the Restitute of Orbis live stream concerning asylums. Let's see what we've got out there so far. Hello, Jamie. Hello, Smitty860. Glad you could join us. Sky Sage, good to see you. Let's see who else we've got. Hey, Kathy, welcome. OIC, good to see you as always. And let's see, is there anybody else that I've missed? Top Notch Creations, welcome. And Old World Hamster Wheel Cranes, I hope you're here and I hope you got that patented. Who else do we have? Go ahead and say hi. Hey, September 26th, Peter Estrada. Hey, Chassis, good to see you. Jimmy B-Side, welcome. The Kelly Gates, good to see you. David Keenum, good to see you. Adam, welcome. Let's give everybody else a chance to log on and we'll go ahead and get started. Redneck Rumbler, welcome. Steve Myers, hello. Little Blue Mustang, good to see ya. Sleepy88580, Cat14. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple stories like that, Cat, no doubt about it. All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. So I wanted to do, hey, Charlie, good to see you. wanted to do a look at asylums. And the reason for that is uh, during the recent exploration on Georgia, I came across a couple of uh, interesting facilities there. And then, of course, there's the grand one, the Georgia Asylum, that we're going to take a close look at, thanks to some courtesy pictures that uh, David sent us. So we'll be looking at that in a second. Alex, good to see you. Good McMorning. That's nice. So we start off with the consideration of the individual named Thomas Story Kirkbride. And we've got a picture of him right here. Can everybody see the picture on my screen? Just making sure. Just give me a heads up that you can see it. Hey, Lunatech Jones, welcome. Josh Gulrud. Gulrud. Sorry, I'm butchering that. My mind's all over the place. All right, perfect. CJ Star Monkey, welcome. All right, so Thomas Story Kirkbride. And this is uh, one of those old style photographs. They didn't necessarily call it a photograph, but a derogatype or just some strange excuse for why they don't have a good photo. Mr. Kirkbride was alive from 1809 to 1883, physician and one of the leading psychiatrists of the United States at the time. And he is known for authoring the Kirkbride plan. He was also apparently the primary executor of the Kirkbride plan. The Kirkbride plan being a nationwide plan for the United States to handle its uh, mentally ill at the time. Mr. Kirkbride wrote a magnum opus called on the construction organization and general arrangements of hospitals for the insane with some remarks on insanity and its treatment. It was published in 1854 and again in 1880. What's intriguing though about uh, good old Mr. Kirkbride is the fact, hey Dwayne, good to see you, is the fact that uh, while he may have been a well-reputed psychiatrist and a physician at the time, it's really interesting when you look at his biography, his involvement with the Kirkbride plan seems to be a little, well, how should we say ambiguous at best, which I know at this point, we're not really surprised when it comes to the 19th century. Yeah, you're all over it there, Adam. Get some of those 3D glasses. <laughs> well, what's intriguing about this is the fact that uh, the Kirkbride plan was a nationwide effort that the United States launched at a time when nationwide efforts were considered to be, well, ill-advised and they really hadn't gone too well. Yeah, you're getting ahead of us already, old world hamster wheel cranes. Well, maybe that'll get you that patent, you know, if you get ahead of things. No, it's all good. Yeah, Batwing, we'll see that in a second. But really, what the official history says is that uh, good old Mr. Kirkbride here was responsible for authoring the plan that everybody went off of. Here's another picture of him. And you know, apparently he came from the old Quaker family, a Pennsylvania re resident. He was born in Pennsylvania and he passed away in Pennsylvania. But uh, in between all that, he continued his work as a physician. And then he also came up with this plan for these incredible asylums. And we'll be taking a look at that. But what I find fascinating about him is how when you look at his biography, it's as though there's just a perfunctory mention of his involvement with the plan, but then he spent the rest of his time being his own physician and treating his own patients. It's really strange, almost as though he was the individual that they decided to assign credit to the plan to. You know, not that I'm saying that's what's happening, but <laughs> oh yeah, well, you and me both, September 26th, and I wasn't joking when I talked about the Journey song a couple live streams back, so all good. 
But in any event, uh, with Mr. Kirk Bride, he authored this plan and he was the one who seemed to be all about conducting it. But then oddly enough, it seemed to be a nationwide effort for the United States. Now, prior to the United States Civil War, the only nationwide efforts had been the two wars the United States had been involved in. The War of 1812, which didn't really go so well, and unless the commander was named Jackson, Perry, or Scott, things tended not to go so well for the United States military. And yet we're supposed to believe that they decided to start this entire nationwide asylum plan in the 1850s. And indeed, you'll find the construction of a lot of the asylums around that time frame, including the first one that we're looking at. But oddly enough, uh, this is Mr. Kirkbride's (laughs) tombstone. Not exactly what you'd expect. Very, a hey, Howard Harrison, welcome. Not really what you'd expect, though. I mean, a very modest tombstone. Hey, Elbow, good to see you. M1, all good. Check in whenever. Everybody's welcome to attend. But I was expecting a, a much larger tombstone for somebody who is as famous and well-known as Thomas Story Kirkbride. And of course, you know, Story, I don't know. We always have these funny names with the architects, and now it is with the architect of the Kirkbride plan. <laughs> Indeed. And that's what I think it boils down to is welcome to the new reality. Yeah, you've seen his image. You're right, Chassie. And that that is one of those images that seems to come up a lot. So it's hard to say what's really going on with the whole Thomas Story Kirkbride. But the official history says that he was the one who came up with the plan. And then the nation just all jumped on board with executing it. And what was his plan? We'll get to that in a second. This is Dorothea Dix, and she was one of the leading nurses during the United States Civil War, and she was the other one who was uh, really keen. Yeah, exactly, Jamie. I'd expect something a lot more regal, too. You know, maybe one of those big, huge obelisks, a giant above-ground tomb, or, you know, I'm not saying, you know, a president's tomb, but certainly something like that. Yeah, and that's my thought as well, Adam. It just seems to be, here you go, here's the story, fit the names and make it all match, and no one's really going to ask any questions. So, well, welcome and thank you for joining us. You picked a great one to start on, so. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, why not? See where it goes. Yeah, there you go. A bat wing shaped stone. Yeah, that's what I would expect. So, so anyway, it was Thomas Story Kirkbride and then Dorothea Dix pictured here. They were the ones who were supposedly the advocates for all the individuals who were suffering from mental health issues in the United States in the 19th century. So why ask that kind of question? Well, why were people having so many mental health issues? You know, was it the rapid settlement or development or was there some other reason? Well, for, hey, Donna, good to see you. Well, for... More recent viewers of the channel, we've covered asylums in the past, and one of the big explanations or theories is that asylums were simply re-education centers or even what they would call concentration camps, a place to run people off and keep them out of the way of society. And you know, if they could reintegrate, which it seemed like very few could, I mean, once you went to the asylum, you weren't coming out of there. And really, that's the story that we have. So, yep. Uh, That's exactly what I think the function of it was, you know, what they would call political prisoners. (laughs) Well, apparently she was very famous during the Civil War. So, and Kathy, good to see you. Well, and, you know, they'll even go so far as to say that they weren't collecting federal taxes until the United States Civil War. But who knows on that account? Because the other big question about these asylums that cropped up all over the country is where in the heck have they gotten the funding for it? So I think I've heard the name. Hetty Green, yeah, I think I've heard the name. I can't uh, draw a connection with it right now. So, oh yeah, Dwayne, Hotel California. So, very good point. Yep, disruptors, people who weren't going to integrate in the new society that they built after the last reset. So, yep, and you're absolutely right, Cruz and Gal. And I've got the whole laundry list for that for the earlier asylum video that I did. I mean, it was literally just anything, right down to something as simple as not liking somebody, but. That's always the joke is that you could throw somebody that you didn't like or you could charge somebody you didn't like with something. So they have a little coin that commemorates her. So she is fondly remembered along with Mr. Kirkbride, apparently, according to the official history. And this actually shows the layout of one of the many asylums that they tore down. Yeah, exactly. Or... You know, and and one of the questions that I'll ask is, you know, did these people go to the asylums willingly once they were committed or did they go against their will? Yeah, and that's it's kind of a recurring theme, Peter, and I hate to say it, but, you know, it's something that does accompany our (laughs) 
American history quite a bit, even though we like to say we don't do that. And we sure have a lot of cases of actually doing that in the United States. So it's not to say other nations haven't, but who knows what the real account is. Well, and it's funny, Elijah, because, uh, oh, nice one there with Christopher Walken, the deer hunter. That's a great movie. It's funny you bring that up because uh, there was supposedly a lot of issues with the Irish, uh, with the Know Nothing Party and the way they were clashing with the Catholic population. So it's really hard to say what was going on. So, well, it's good to see you. I'm glad you can make it. And hopefully you still don't think I'm related to the Kardashians. <laughs> I actually mentioned her in my very first video, Old World Hamster Wheel Cranes. Yeah. And in fact, my first exploration, St. Clet is in Wisconsin. That's where uh, poor Rosemary Kennedy got sent off to spend the remainder of her life. And she had a very unfortunate end. So, Sarah, good to see you. I don't know. Maybe because I, that's how I keep my sanity is by being a little sarcastic, you know, so I don't get sent to the asylum. <laughs> Uh, so another picture of Dorothea Dix here, probably not as flattering as the early one, but she is pretty well documented if you just go off of the pictures. And then here we have it, the main plan of the asylums or the bat wing that we already leaned into earlier. Yeah, exactly. Cat. She received a lobotomy, Rosemary Kennedy. Apparently uh, she got sent away to the asylum and she was unmanageable word on the grapevine was that she knew a little too much about some of the Kennedy family's dealings. And the official reason was Joseph Kennedy, the father didn't want her embarrassing them politically. So he had her mind disconnected with the classic procedure of the lobotomy at the time. So, you know, that's the unfortunate tragic story with Rosemary Kennedy. But back on topic, so this is what the layout of these asylums were, and, and it's called the Batwing layout. And don't you find it interesting that the Batwing layout doesn't exactly seem like it'd be something conducive towards the recovery of patients that are really suffering from mental illness. So the justification that Thomas Story Kirkbride gave for this was that you'd have all these patients on these outer rooms and they would get sunlight. And that's why all these buildings had so many windows. But what you'll see as we look at these is all these compounds have a very similar appearance to them. And that includes the ones that are not located in the United States. And therefore, ostensibly, we're not subjected to the Kirkbride plan. Well, you know, it, it just depends. 25 to 30 years, you know, like I like to joke, you need to have a civil war and then you need to have an economic depression. And that just inspires the rapid building as fast as you can do it. So. Well, and who knows what's really going on with the potato famine, too. You know, was that just a story or what? Oh, yeah. They have a plan for everything. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and you're exactly right, Chassie, and that pretty much any reason anybody could be thrown in there. So, But the other thing was the different styles of architecture, and they're supposedly affiliated with Gothic-style architecture. So this is why you see the Gothic architecture, and... You know, you can say Arkham architecture. We go Arkham Asylum from Batman, but this is actually where that connotation is drawn from is this Gothic architecture. Now, granted, this is just a church, but this was really the example they were supposedly going off of. So why on earth anybody would legitimately think this would make an actual good building or architectural style for people suffering from mental illness in the 19th century? Well, your guess is as good as mine, probably because it's not supposed to make any sense. And then here's probably the quintessential lunatic asylum, the New Jersey State Lunatic Asylum, where they really embodied the Kirkbride plan with the layout. Now, where things get really strange, though, is, yeah, tuberculosis, there's another reason, too. Where things start to get really strange, though, is when you look up who actually architected these asylums, and it's always hard to find it. And you might recall from uh, the exploration on the ground that I did in the Midwest, and we looked at Independence Hospital in Iowa. You really can't find any record of construction or the architect. It's, oh, they needed an insane asylum. So boom, they had it and off it was and ready to go. Yeah, pretty much. And it just seemed like they had all the labor and they just already had this plan. And there was never a centralized architect that was designated. The only centralized people involved with this Kirkbride plan were Kirkbride himself and Dorothea Dix, according to the official account. And it's just really bizarre how they would have coordinated this, where the resources came from the monetary resources, the building materials. Of course, that's always a question with all these things. So this is just basically our introduction to the asylum. So now we're going to go take a closer look at the Georgia asylum. 
So one second here and let me switch over to that. And you let me know as soon as you can see this. All right. Yeah, exactly. All right, can everybody see this? The Milledgeville State Hospital. And I'd like to give a special thanks to David Kay because he's provided all of our great photos on the ground of the Milledgeville State Hospital. So, marvelous. All right, so you can see it right there. Apparently, this started before the Kirkbride plan. And there is evidence that several of these centers obviously were existing before the Kirkbride plan. And it was some local physician who took charge of it and... That was that, and they rolled with it on the ground. And then once it was built, it got integrated into the Kirkbride plan. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Plague, plaque, it's all the same thing. So, But this was the one in Georgia. Milledgeville was the previous capital of Georgia before they moved it to Atlanta. So let's take a look at this uh, wondrous facility here. And again, we could thank David. Now, what I found interesting is they have a very large cemetery. Now, this is supposed to represent a cemetery, but... They stated that, and I really appreciate that, David, and they really stated that 25,000 people and who knows how many died there and are buried on the ground. So right off the bat, you already have suspicion of something crazy going on. So I'll probably get to that September 26th. So it's all in good time, plenty of time. Yep. And there you go. Lots of different names, asylums, Kirkbrides, mental, psych ward, state hospital, sanatorium, and then let's not forget they had soldier asylums, they had orphan asylums, they had children asylums. So pretty much any reason you can think of just to have people confined and quarantined and whatever else. So, and now that uh, we've gotten into the show a little bit, just be sure you hit that like button, support the channel. I appreciate it. But what I find interesting about this is right off the bat, you suddenly see that there's a much more ominous tone with these asylums. So not only are they just used to quarantine people, if you will, or confine people, but they're potentially also used as, dare I say, extermination centers, because you have large cemeteries around every one of these. And when I did my little exploration of the Soldiers Asylum in Milwaukee, and that was another one of my early explorations, hey, Eric, welcome. Yeah, exactly. I noticed that there was a large cemetery there as well. So, you know, this is one of those things. Yeah, and just about Every single one of them had an underground. You're absolutely right. And yeah, you're their own crematorium and large cemetery. So just all kinds of crazy things going on at these places. And we're not even talking about some of the things that they did to some of the patients. So anyway, we're in Milledgeville, Georgia. We'll take a look at some of the grounds here. But every single one of these is a large compound. And by large compound, you've got a series of buildings connected to a main administration building. Hey, Kathy, welcome. Yep. Work farms for the feeble-minded and infirmed. Yep. They had many different names for them. You're absolutely right. I mean, it's difficult to not find a name. So, <laughs> well, it's all good, Sarah. Thanks for being here. Yeah. And, it, and it's interesting how they continued, you know, even past World War II, they seem to evolve a little bit, but I'm sure everybody's seen or heard of the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which is where Jack Nicholson got his big start. Also got him cast as the Joker in the first Batman movie. So anyway, let's look at some more dramatic photos. So here's one of the buildings and you can see it's relatively grown over, but you have our classic styling of the columns and the pediment. And then of course the very well ornate door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and isn't that interesting chassis because there there's accounts of them doing that with soldiers from the other side. There's accounts of them doing that with their own soldiers. It's a very good point. Oh yeah. Well, and so that's, that's all part of the interesting aspect when you look at a lot of these grounds here, you know, and you just see how extensive this building is. You got the steps leading up to it. It's built in the ground. Now, what were the asylums originally? Well, on my video, I posited potentially that they were originally resorts for the original civilization. And then I believe they were converted to be sanctuaries to survive whatever terrible event happened. And then once the new powers had taken over after the reset, they used these asylums. Thanks, David. They used these asylums as the buildings to quarantine, confine, and deal with all the people who weren't going to integrate into the new society. 
because I've always talked about it. You had conflict, indoctrination, and assimilation, or conflict, assimilation, indoctrination. I can't be too obvious with that acronym, okay? So, in any event, let's move on to the next one. But you can just see it, though, that in the structures of these buildings, they obviously had a different purpose. You're not putting this kind of effort into building an asylum on the fly. And you're certainly not doing it at that time frame in the 19th century and all over the place because you'll find these all over the United States, which is very interesting. Here's the main administration building. And I was told that originally the dome here was gold and that they changed it at some point in the past. And you can see you've got your good old yeah, conflict or catastrophe or both catastrophe and then conflict. You've got your main dome and then you've got your pediment and the columns. And this gives a very different appearance for this building. Oh, yeah, the ambulance movie, 1990s. Yeah, you're right, Jimmy. That's a good call out there. And yeah, that also had uh, actor Eric Braden in it. And you, anybody who watches soap operas still, you might know him on The Young and the Restless. He still plays the uh, patriarch on that show. Yes, it's sad that I know that, but, you know, I, I was a kid once too. And everybody watched soap operas back in the day. So. Yeah, it's a good point. It does have a very fine, well-rounded look to it. So, <laughs> Well, uh, Kathy, we're well past this process. The process that uh, I'm referring to comes all the way back from the 19th century. I mean, it's continuing away. So, Well, thank you for that, old world hamster wheel crane. So, yeah, donkey brained. <laughs> Speaking of, you really need to get that patent going. So, Yep, and uh, he was in a couple great movies. Uh, he was also in Escape from the Planet of the Apes. This is actor Eric Braden. And um, what was the other one he was in? Oh, Colossus, The Forbidden Project. It was a very interesting movie about a supercomputer that took over the world. So, <laughs> yep, you see, sometimes I just go off on little tangents, and now soap operas have entered the game. So, look what you've all done to me. <laughs> all right, I know. Excessive watching of soap operas, another reason you could be confined to an asylum. <laughs> yeah we probably are kathy it's an ongoing process it's a continuous recursory process or a nasty recursion loop so yeah pretty much and then here's another image i mean they would probably call this a chapel now but you know very nice tower all in the same facility and keep in mind the population of milledgeville in georgia is not that uh it's not that large i think it's only about sixteen thousand. if you got that david correct me if i'm wrong because i intend to do an exploration of milledgeville it's a very interesting small town that's just kind of out there all on its own so but very very fascinating buildings here you got a lot of brick construction and potentially mixed with some facading, but you can see this is all classic concrete. And once again, you have a little pediment above the door. So, worldwide ghosts, good to see you. So, yep, excessive everything. And that's what it's all about is keeping this fall apart. So, okay, let's go to the next one. Another view of the main administration building. But you just... You consider the construction materials and then the efforts that originally went into this. And, you know, it's just, it's very strange to me that none of this could have been from that time frame. So very, very strange. But here's where it gets really interesting. So they actually have the officers of the asylum listed right here. And of course you can tell this looks like this was something that was added much later. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's what it's known for now, uh, Georgia Military College. I remember working with a few uh, students who actually went there back in my teaching days. So, you know, military school cadets who moved on to four-year colleges. Interesting people. Nothing against them. Just very interesting. <laughs> Apothecary. First assistant physician. The resident physician. You got the matron, assistant steward. General storekeeper. The treasurer. And the chaplain. Yeah, they're all, all listed right there. <laughs> yep that's a good call out there cat so and you're all over it and that just gives you the idea that that's not the uh, good kind of cement so you start to see that kind of fading what's it say down here it's like company out of macon macon georgia which isn't too far from that so yeah very interesting place milledgeville in this large facility, which is what it was known for. Now, here we have some interesting symbols right here. And what exactly are these representing? 1776, and yet we've got a sun up here. 
Very, very fascinating. Yeah, someone was paying attention, weren't they? Edison Cement. Well, he hadn't founded his company. Get it? <laughs> well, and, and uh, what's our real story? That's the other thing. And uh, also a thanks to you as well for a lot of the pictures you've sent is they're constantly renovating these places. And so it becomes a lot more difficult to ascertain what the original construction materials were. I'd say there's a fair bet that you've got some good original construction materials here. Although if you ask anybody, they'll tell you that access to this place can be a little problematic. Usually you can get on it, but David just did it. So he could probably speak to it a little bit better than I could. So <laughs> you got it. You got it. Well, Hey, don't worry. I, I actually slipped a little New Zealand in this presentation a little bit later. So yeah. And that's exactly what we'll be told. They're old state symbols, you know, and it's the same thing with every state. So. Yeah, not going to say it, Rebecca, but it does bear some striking resemblance, doesn't it? I am sure it's yet another coincidence. So, <laughs> moving on. This is an intriguing looking building here, especially with the roof. But uh, you also see that they're having fun with bricks. And I wonder what was in here originally. It's very intriguing. So, <laughs> Yeah, and I think you're on to something there because it's usually easy to tell you know, exactly what's new and what's not. But very extensive compound in Milledgeville for the Georgia lunatic sign. This is a great picture here because here you tend to see this facading in places where it looks like they have concrete over bricks. Now, is this the situation everywhere? No, but there's a way you can determine this if you're actually on site, and that's by knocking on the concrete. And if you get that uh, little bit of that hollow ring on it, you can start to get the idea. So yeah. And I think you're on with that one there, Chassis. So, well, it's funny you say that because uh, guess what? Uh, some asylums, I think the one in Buffalo, they've converted back into a hotel and it's actually a five-star hotel. So if you really want to stay in one, you can, you know, I have my, my preference to stay in bed and breakfast that are old world buildings. Cause you can't hear anything outside of them, but you know, that's just me. You can go stay in a hotel that used to be in an asylum if you're so inclined. They have that opportunity for you. Very interesting, huh? This is a good one right here. Here you can see these balconies that go all the way up. Yes, that's what you need, balconies for people that have mental illness, right? But you also see some wonderful brickwork. And this is something that uh, one of the reasons I want to focus on getting uh, boots on the ground in Georgia is this is the kind of stuff you see. And that's why I'm very appreciative to David for getting this. You, know, you get to see all this incredible brickwork and you know there's a lot of stuff that survived uh, in Georgia. So look, you don't have to do it. All right. It's just be aware of it. They do have one <laughs> and they're all over the place. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Yeah, I know October's right around the corner. Don't worry. We'll have some special videos on that as well. Now, this is interesting here because you start to see a little bit of deterioration, you know, but what really caused this? Was this something they redid or is this the real McCoy? You know, because who knows what these structures were subjected to? How long has this really been here? I mean, you go on these grounds and you go in a lot of these buildings in Georgia. Yep, you're absolutely right, Scott. Red clay dirt, too. Now, I remember that. There's none of that fine Midwestern dirt down there in Georgia. It is red clay dirt. It's really interesting. So, it gives the impression, along with Stone Mountain, that something else happened there. So, oh, yeah, that's a good call out there, Old World Hamster Wheel Cranes. That's a good call out. They've come up a couple times. All right, let's go on to the next one. And then, you know, here we have it again with this little uh, metal plate that they always seem to add on to this to give these buildings a little bit more of, a, of an authentic feel. So, <laughs> Can never get enough of it. This is interesting here because, you know, this these grounds here remind me of some of the military academies that I explored in Missouri. There's two that are closed down, Wentworth Military Academy and Kemper Military Academy. And they're both from, well, Kemper is from the mid-19th century. I think it's 1844. And Wentworth, I think, was probably about 15, 20 years later. I'm shooting from the hip on that one. But they look a lot like this compound in Georgia. It's really strange. And then you also draw the connection with the Georgia Military College, which is also in the same town. So very interesting across the board. And I think this will be the last one we'll look at from uh, this one in Georgia is just the pediment right here. So 
you see that you have this large compound. It's very well built. You have all these columns, all this effort put into construction. And this is just supposed to be a place for people who are mentally ill. And they put this kind of effort into it. So, yeah, exactly. X plagues, names and founded. You got it, cat. Um, it seems to be a recurring play. So, all right, let's uh, jump to our next asylum. Let me get it pulled up here. You may have seen this one before, but we'll play the little game of uh, where are we? Because that's always a fun game to play. So, all right, one second here. And can everybody see this really wonderful castle that doesn't really look like a castle? No, I don't think so, but I think uh, they definitely played a role. Wait till you get to uh, next week's video on that one. More to follow. All right. Can everybody see the castle here? <laughs> Plagues, plaques. It's a fun word to, to toy around with. All right. Thanks, Kathy. So does anybody want to take a guess where we are now? Obviously, we're somewhere in the United States. I'll give you that clue. But where do you think we might be within the great United States? <laughs> Butler Hospital. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, Stone Mountain. Yeah, that's true. It is, especially when you walk on top of it. So I need to get there in person, Old World Hamster Wheel Cranes. I need to get there in person. Mass, that's a good guess. And that's what a lot of people would say. Oh, no, you're closer, you're closer. All right, let's see if I... Uh, no, not L.A., that's a good guess, though, because there are some pointy ones like that. We're actually back in Iowa, and this is one of the ones that I haven't featured. This is in western Iowa, and if you're familiar with Iowa, there is absolutely nothing in western Iowa. The only major cities you have out there are Sioux City and Council Bluffs, and this is far to the east of it. So this is in Cherokee, Iowa, and this is the very large asylum they have in Cherokee Island, Iowa. I always found it interesting that in Iowa, they had three large asylums that were going full bore all the way from 1860 onward. And if you actually look at the grounds on this one, I mean, this is literally in the middle of nowhere. There is nothing around Cherokee. So it's definitely one of those asylums that really bucks the convention of, well, we're, we're really putting it as far away as we can from other places. So, you know, they got this elaborate fence here. And apparently this one is still functional from what I understand, but I haven't been able to get on the ground yet. And yeah, I mean, the buildings on it look really nice, so. Hey, Brim's Killer, good to see ya. And watch out, don't shoot an anti-tank guided missile at me, okay? Sorry, I just, I just wanted to throw that joke out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see all these large towers on it, and then you've got these base stones that we see. And I mean, this was a very well-constructed one, you know, or a very well-preserved one, perhaps I should say. Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in Iowa. You know, we jump from Georgia to Iowa. You know, we could expect to see it in Georgia, but here in Iowa, out in the middle of the Midwest in the farms, yeah, your corn palaces, your bluegrass palaces. So, no, nah, no bears in Iowa. And once in a while, you'll get an odd animal here and there. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't handle the snow without a doubt. So, <laughs> well, there you go, Chassis, applying that business sense there. So, <laughs> okay 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 i gotta i gotta stay on topic here so yeah and you're right kathy a lot of them are a lot of them are and i was just one of those odd places that i just happen to be going through a lot depending on my travels so all right let's take a look at some more so this is an older image of it, but this is just really bizarre. So you have this out here on the prairie grass, just this very large facility. And that's why I put it on the thumbnail for this one, because it's just really strange. And the, the whole thing, thank, thanks, what's our real story? I appreciate that. The whole thing with this, though, is it gives you the impression that these were buildings that survived from a different time and that they were simply repurposed because you already had these very large facilities that were self-sustaining, built to operate off the grid. This is a great place. And Cherokee, Iowa is a great example of some place that's just way out of the way. You're far away from any urban area. And this is where you can send all the people that you don't want to reintegrate with society. So, yep, this is the same building. You're just looking at it from a distance here. 
all in one photo. Yeah, isn't that right? Oh, I see. It's not big enough. <laughs> yep. And that's what a photo like this really reminds me of, Cat. It does look post-apocalypse, you know. I'm going to see Mad Max drive up in the V8 Interceptor here. So, <laughs> yep. And it gets better because they originally didn't have a railroad going to Cherokee or so they say. Now, when you try looking into the historical records of Cherokee, Iowa, things get really, really obfuscated. So, it's very, very strange. And I, I've tried looking at local records in that, so. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And, and Texas has a lot of similarities to Iowa. So good to see you. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the, the only one that's still operational. That's the official reason they'll give. So. But then uh, here's another image of it. And they didn't even have the road paved or so they say it was just a dirt road and then a couple paths that ran up to it. But very, very interesting main administration building with this unique tower on it. And you'll find some of these unique architectural stylings on these um, buildings. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely right, Eric. Horrible vanilla skies on this one. So what was that? Abrams killer? Was this a general asylum or one of those? Clear? They say this was a general one, but, you know, it's, it's up to anybody's guess on it. So... <laughs> Yeah, and in Iowa, no less, a place known for being uh, very, very green all the time because of the quality of the soil and a lot of the rain. So, yep, and that's where a lot of it starts from is at that point. And then this is one of the uh, supporting buildings on the same facility. It's not part of the main building, but that's always that's always the thing about it. You know, as if that main building wasn't large enough. Oh, no, we needed more buildings. So that's where it gives me the impression that these were actually compounds. So, yeah, exactly, Adam. And, you know, I think it's just another issue of them playing games with words, you know. Well, this is actually this. No, it's actually that. And it's an asylum. It's a hospital. It's a place to go and recover. This is probably one of the most interesting images. So this is actually a postcard. And here you get an entirely different aspect of what it looks like. And I mean, here, you know, you got the smokestack in the back. You know, really, what was this? Well, when this functioned as potentially a sanctuary, mm, it's hard to say. Yep. And that's why you get the best tasting sweet corn. It's just a little bit better than the sweet corn in Minnesota and a little bit better than the sweet corn in Illinois and Wisconsin. I know, I know. Throw tomatoes at me. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I come to that conclusion, Jamie, just because they're self-sustaining. So, yeah, pretty much, Kathy. You know, and we're not even, we're not really even talking about some of the other things they did here with the human experimentation that they did. And I don't want to use those words. It's well documented, but there's a lot of situations. And I mean, this is already a dark enough video without talking about that aspect of it. You know, people being hauled away to these places, so. Here's an aerial photo. It's still in operation currently, although they say the purpose has changed, just like uh, the one over in Independence, Iowa. Now, these are on opposite sides of the state. The original asylum in Iowa, which was in Mount Pleasant down in southeast Iowa, which also just happened to be on that same route I took when I went to Keokuk, that got closed down uh, apparently in the 1980s, I think, by Governor Branstad at the time. So, Well, did they need to burn all of them or could they have buried them? They could have done both. I mean, it seemed like this place was uh, going along in full swing. All these places were. So yeah, frontier psychology, good one. All right. So anyway, we've looked at one on the East Coast and now let's take a look at, uh, and we've looked at one in the Midwest. Let's take a look at one out on the West Coast. So give me one second here. All right. This is a good image. Share screen. Okay, can everybody see this one? You must be from Iowa. <laughs> yes, I've heard that one. I have heard that one quite a bit. Parts of it are. All right, Kathy, thanks. So, Again, still in the United States. Does anybody want to guess where we are now? So I have uh, featured this in uh, one of the more recent explorations, in fact. So yeah, let me get a little closer on this one here for you. <laughs> 
you you just need one that's about uh, 10 miles by 10 miles, right? Oh, I see. And you know what's funny is if we had a building that was uh, 10 miles by 10 miles, somebody would say, well, yeah, it's just a regular building. They could have built that in the 19th century. Well, thanks, Kat. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. A little further west, Kathy. Good guess. <laughs> Baghdad. <laughs> Uh, you're getting there. Go south. Washington, that's a good guess. Let's just say it's a state that people don't speak highly of right now. So, <laughs> Missouri. Yeah, wouldn't that be funny? That's some good ones in Missouri. This is actually the asylum in Napa, California. Yeah, doesn't it? California. Yep, yeah, you got it. Napa, California. Now, there's all kinds of interesting accounts with this one, although, hey, you haven't been looking at the upcoming Segway videos, have you there, Jimmy? I'm a little suspicious. <laughs> no, that's okay. I've been, I've been teasing St. Petersburg for a while. Oh, yeah. Okay, what's the question here? Are there still some... They all they call them all something else. They do not use the term asylum anymore. They call them state hospitals or hospital this, hospital that. They've completely dropped asylum from the lexicon. Yeah, Napa Castle, that's a good one. So <laughs> that's a good one there, Ben. <laughs> yeah. For the same company. Yeah, California's a very unique place, so. It does look like an array, doesn't it? Now, what's intriguing about this one is there's virtually no official account with this. It is very hard to find records for what really happened at this asylum. And we have pictures with it. We have some difficult accounts of accounting for the number of bricks that went into it. You have all these incredible towers. And yet the actual facilitation of this asylum, the establishment of it, who went there and why, it's very difficult to find any records. However, there are records of some sort of crazy eugenics experiment that went on in California from the late 1800s all the way to about the 1960s. It's really strange. And a lot of this eugenics involved sterilization programs. Now, this is definitely one of the crazy stories, but there seems to be some documentation with this, and I'm going to attach it on the Reddit site. So, But we do have some good pictures of the grounds. Really nice fountain here. And once again, when you consider what Napa used to be, this definitely looks like some kind of place that's just way out there in the middle of nowhere. So yet you've got this really beautiful fountain. Oh yeah. And nobody does uh, boots on the ground, especially in California like he does. So yeah, there you go, Charlie. There you go. Yeah. So this is just one of those stories that really stands out when you look at the fountain and, you know, here you have the greenhouse. Isn't this a pleasant looking individual? Well, and that's where it boils down to. So, you know, I don't think that that's exactly what they're originally intended for, you know, for confining people. And I'll say it, confining people with mental illnesses. So, yeah, that seems to happen a lot. That's why I try to advertise these a little bit more. So, yeah, I think that would definitely be a, something to relax in a little bit. And here's the main image. Yeah, it's, it's really bizarre to me, though, that you can't find an actual account with this asylum. You know, I mean, it was built. You have a lot of photos of it, but it's just, it's really strange. <laughs> yeah, Dwayne. No doubt about it. I don't know. I mean, for all I know, it could have been built in, you know, they, they said it was built in a couple months. You know, it's kind of like the one in Iowa. They have no real account of it, so. And I'm sure they had everything there that they needed. Well, and, you know, you get the suspicion, is there actually a paved road that's under all that dirt? Because that's kind of the feeling you get when you look at some of the ones in Iowa. So, yep, that's the same Napa. Now, this facility has been torn down for some time. But, yes, this is supposedly located in Napa. Well, thank you, Isabella. I appreciate that. And happy two-month anniversary to you. Get your new special icon. Yeah, 
and uh, the the sutro baths. That's a really good point. <laughs> they say they tore it down, chassis, but that's a good guess. Oh yeah, and you hear that one all the time. But I, I think what's interesting about this one is the whole fact that they have this concept of the eugenics associated with it. So, and then this is one of the few other images with it. So it's pretty much the same image, but. So those are three across the United States that we've looked at. So we've gone East Coast, Midwest, and West Coast, and you can see some variances in them, and yet the compounds look very much the same. So, hmm, good questions all around. And it very likely was. There you go, Jimmy. And if it, if it survived, you know, he could have gone down there and did the big renovation project. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what it boils down to as well. You know, something like that happened. I also suspect the same thing happened to the Colosseum in Rome. When you take a look at that, of course, they try to say it's natural erosion because it's been there for so long. Okay, so we've looked at the United States. Now, let's take a look at some asylums elsewhere. So give me one second here. All right. Share screen and let me know when you can see this. Okay. Can everybody see this lovely view in Montreal, Canada? Well, and that's always one of the hard sells, too, because there's a lot of people that'll do everything to deny what melted rock really is. You know, they want to see everything but so. Well, thank you very much, OG Scotty Skid Row interviews. I appreciate that. And uh, featuring one from Montreal. So. So the whole point of looking at these other asylums in other areas of the land, you know, Canada, we can explain it a little bit because it's right next door to the United States. So maybe they got some ideas from Kirkbride and they decided to do the same layout, possibly. But what's really intriguing about this is you look at this and you see the fact that uh, these asylums have the same layout. And you've got the main administration building, you got the bat wings and the whole nine yards. So it's really, really bizarre. Because it's really showing you that, no, these were actually compounds. These weren't buildings that they were just uh, pulling out all over the time. Rome, Roma, all the names for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and after the Civil War, we went uh, asylum building crazy. So, you know, what are you going to do about it? And just uh, go off the wall? And that's what they'd say. Yeah, maybe they did, QB. Maybe they did. So. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. Oh, boy. Okay, okay, okay. We all have our issues, don't worry. All right, so this is in France. And granted, this is just a rendering, but you can see you have a lot of the same touches. I mean, here it's this giant walled compound. Very clearly self-sustaining. Yeah, and it might well be. I'm not sure on that one, Big AB. I think there there's accounts of some. I mean, it's like I said with Napa, it's really hard to find the official histories on a lot of these so-called asylums, especially when you get back before the 20th century. So anytime 1800s, it gets really sketchy. And I think I've told you all, and I'll just uh, reiterate it, it's always questionable when you look at historical records from the 19th century, 1800s. I remember looking in a courthouse in Iowa, and they admitted that uh, they didn't have any records from before 1875 because the judge kept the records in a shoebox. No joke. I still remember doing that video, and I was a little shocked. So here we're in, we're in France. This is uh, Bedlam, United Kingdom, probably the most famous mental asylum, and Look at that. They got a nice big tower. They got their pediment and their columns. So it's as though everybody knows you really need to lay these things out well. So but yeah, no, nothing uh, really shocking about this. You know, do these clouds look real? Look at these clouds. 
<laughs> this is probably why I sound sarcastic some of the time because I see photos like this and I really just can't contain myself. Oh yeah, some real looking clouds. Looks like they got Bob Ross to do some painting on this one. Look at this figure right here. I mean, this this entire image just looks completely off. Uh, yeah, exactly. And that that's the question I always ask, Elijah. I mean, it's ornate because it clearly had a different purpose, so... Yeah, everything in this picture seems a little off. So don't worry, I'll post it on Reddit so you can uh, study it on your own. Here's another view of it, a little sketch. But you can see that all these, okay, now this is Cumberland Hospital. This is in Australia. So somebody made the observation that there's no known star forts in Australia. But, I mean, look, you've got the same construction cues, though, down here. I think this is in Sydney, if memory served, Cumberland Hospital in Sydney, Australia. And the hospital is supposedly still operational, but I haven't been to Australia recently. Well, yeah, Chassis, that's why those trees look nice. This is Australia. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, it does look nice. Good old palm tree. Much nicer than the ones in California do. I know you're going to throw rocks at me, so it's okay. Yeah, so the columns and intricate construction. So the main admin building that still survives to this day. Yeah, exactly. Let's move on. So this is another view of Cumberland. This is still in Australia. And of course, they have to have the nice cool clock tower there as well. Because, you know, how else are you going to do a, an insane asylum without a cool clock tower? And lots of bricks. Lots of bricks. And even larger block bricks. But yeah, they've got some beauties in Australia. There's no doubt about it. I got some explorations coming up there. I've got to get to Europe first. So, but you know, I operate, I prefer to cover things in depth, but that's just me. I'm trying to remember where this one was. I think this is another Paris one, but just a huge facility. So giving you that same impression. Yeah. And I think, uh, cat, that's where a lot of us heard of them the first time, you know, I mean, nobody really talked about it. Oh, uh, well, I can tell you the first one I heard of was Arkham Asylum. When I read the Batman comics, when I was little, <laughs> that's where I first heard the word asylum, Arkham Asylum, <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm not even joking. I remember there was a Batman record where after he defeated the Joker, he said, maybe what the Joker needs is a full frontal lobotomy. I'm not joking. I think you can still listen to it on YouTube. My, 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 how things have changed, huh? <laughs> Well, you know, Elijah, you got to have all the cool towers. So Japan has a very interesting approach to it. Might have to get to that. There's also an account there uh, from, uh, what was it? It was the novel Shogun, where they talked about how they regard people with mental illnesses there. Why superstars, welcome. Good to see ya. <laughs> Zoom in on the four. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right there. If I don't zoom in exactly, don't worry. Well, yeah, Kat, that was the comic. This was actually a, it was an old, old comic from the 70s. So a good 10 years before Killing Joke came out. Yeah, I'm dating myself there. So, oh, the clock. Yeah, it was uh, four ones. It wasn't an IV. But you do actually see a couple IVs on the clock. So I think they changed them a little bit. All right, moving on. So another view of Bedlam. This is once they expanded a little bit. What really stands out to me, though, is all these incredible towers that you have here with Bedlam. So obviously it links back to that energy harvesting from the atmosphere and what the original purpose was. The other thing that strikes me is just how well laid out the grounds are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you got it. Yep. And uh, technology is one of those things that stands out. September 26th. Absolutely. This is an interesting one. Uh, Lawrence Asylum. I think this is another one in Canada, if I'm not mistaken. But you got one of these little subsidiary towers right here. These are always really interesting to see. Would have loved to have seen this one in purpose or in person, excuse me. Well, that's what they'll tell us. Because <laughs> you got all the time in the world. You may as well make something artistically beautiful, right? Yeah, this is Ontario. 
And this looks like a number of asylums that you'll see in the United States. See how far back that goes there. St. Lazar. Now they'll say this is a prison, but they also use this as an asylum. And again, a lot of uh, intricate, ornate details. <laughs> uh. Most of the photos I'm showing Abrams Killer come from uh, either 1860 to the 1880 time frame. But I'll see if I can get some dates strapped onto them on the info when I post them on Reddit if you're so interested. Although you know my issue with that, so. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how it's happening. Oh, come on now. It's not that bad, is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, moving on. So this is in Dublin. So they've got them there in Ireland. Let's uh, zoom in on that clock for you. I well, can't quite tell. Do, you know, do we have an IV or four ones there? So, Hey, Roxanne, welcome. Oh, so you're not too far from Hirsch Castle then. Yeah, that's a very interesting location in California, I've got to say, for a variety of reasons. Got the old insane asylum there, and then you got Hearst Castle within striking distance. So, <laughs> yeah, I think every place is getting messed with. So, but yeah, once again, large smokestack. Need to have that in Ireland, too. We're in Ireland right now. That's where this one is that we're looking at. So, just letting you know how widespread these all are. This is St. Lomans. I think this might have been New Zealand. So, yeah, I had to get to New Zealand, too. Yeah, that's right. The official Hotel California. I had that included on an early video, too. Okay, yeah, so this is New Zealand here. And so even all the way down there in New Zealand, they have the exact same layout. It's a very large building. You got a smokestack. Large towers. <laughs> Hard to tell, isn't it? Just jumping all over the place, and yet you could be anywhere at any point in time. Yeah, I think that says it all right there, Roxanne. And there's a lot of places that have that kind of connotation to them when you go to them. Well, you know... It's not October yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is sunny side. So here we're back in New Zealand again. And this is another one of these interesting photos where it's just sitting there on the dirt. You don't really have any roads or anything going up to it. So uh, Europe does have a lot that resemble the Kirkbrides, although they'll call it Victorian architecture. That's what you see when you go to the United Kingdom, too. It's all Victorian this and Victorian that. They just happen to look the same. But that's why we poke fun at the names of, that they have for architecture. It's Victorian architecture. It's Grayskull Revival architecture. It's this architecture. It's that architecture. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Not surprising. Uh, no, it wasn't today. Believe me. Yep, and I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, I wish I were messing with you, believe me. I wish this was all just in my head, but you can see it as well as I can. Oh, yeah. Oh, the graduate library. You know what? Uh, thanks for mentioning that, Kat. I'm going to have to make sure I get that on my list of the university explorations that are coming up because we've got a lot to look at. Oh, yes, that there is. A lot of other suspiciously named lands down there, too. So, All right, let's see what else we had. Still in Sunnyside in New Zealand. Or if you want to think it's Iowa, that's fine. But, you know, they say it's New Zealand. Hey, for all I know, maybe they did take a picture in Iowa and pass it off as New Zealand. It's always a thing we have to keep in mind, though. It's a very serious point when you're looking at these images. 
is how accurate are they? And that's why one of the things when someone tells me there's a date associated with the image, if you go back and you look at uh, one of my early videos, we talk about that because we don't necessarily know what the origin of an image is. And that's one of the reasons I like and I prefer on the ground exploration. So you can really ascertain and verify things. Yeah, that's a good point. I've got that on the list too. And I believe Mr. Sagan will be appearing in that video because uh, he actually talks quite a bit about it. Just the way he says it. Conak. Yep. We'll be looking at it. Nice big compound that they supposedly spent a couple thousand years building. I believe it. And I'm sure you do too. Still sunny side. But yeah, all the way down in New Zealand and they're doing the same thing. Exactly the same thing. <laughs> yeah, don't even bother trying to sort your way through those. No, I try not to yell at good old Carl. You know, I try to be respectful. It's just sometimes, you know, he can, he can get a little unnerving. You got to keep him in line. Otherwise, he's going to be pontificating for 10 hours. And, you know, nobody wants to watch a 10-hour video. And then uh, the final picture. Here's a whole picture of the entire compound where you can see this little guard tower better. Maybe that's the sniper tower, right, Jamie? <laughs> oh yeah and here you can actually see just how large it really is so you know what's what's the overall population of new zealand and how difficult is it to really get all these people why do they need these large asylums in new zealand so <laughs> you know that's right slater billions and billions <laughs> Oh, the Presidio. That's a good call out there, Peter. You're right. The Presidio in San Francisco. Very, very interesting. There's even a movie called The Presidio with John Connery and Mark Harmon before he uh, sank himself on CSI for the rest of his life. So that's kind of interesting. <laughs> I don't know, disobey. I mean, because then, you know, when he changes it, which he does every week, i would get kind of old, so. Are you serious? <laughs> I think it was. I think it was in, uh, yep, no doubt about it. You know, and it's just, it's another example of things that are worldwide and you can't really get around it. Here's the interior. Very well laid out and very well decorated on the inside too, you know. So again, you can see, hmm, how hard would it be to have converted this one into a hotel? <laughs> hey, Smitty, you know, I, I got to make some cracks about things like NCIS and all these CIS shows, you know. That's a real American thing too. <laughs> well, that it is. So unfortunately for the good people in New Zealand, I think they tore this one down. So no converting this into a hotel, but another interesting story when you come to that. So, well, that's the last official image that I have, but just some closing points on asylums. So it's pretty clear to see that uh, this is something, a project and approach. The Kirkbride plan was not limited to the United States. It was across the lands. Now, were there some different aspects to it? Were there some other things that may have been executed differently or conducted differently across the lands? No doubt about it. You can certainly look at some accounts with places like Japan and China and the Asian areas, and it seems as though they dealt with it a little differently. But then on the same token, you can find these large inexplicable structures that were there. So not really sure what to make of those details, but it seems like that plan was carried out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It seems like that plan was carried out and you know somebody asked the question earlier is it still going on and yeah there's always something that's still going on in the wheels but i think the most important thing about it is the fact that we have to remember and consider did the people who end up in the asylums go willingly and the evidence that we have it seems to indicate that they went there to some degree willingly now once they were there obviously there was no leaving and i think that's really what it boils down to and that's the most important thing to remember it all comes down to your free will. And if you're terrified by the subject of asylums and how they were used in the past, don't let the fear get to you. Remember that you still have control over your own will and you still make your own decisions. 
Yep, exactly. And so I think at that time, you know, you had people who'd been through a lot of conflict and for whatever reason, it seems as though we go through the scale where a lot of people lose their own sense of will and they forget that you're able to resist this just by holding on to your own sense of will. So that's probably the most important message to come from this. Oh, yeah. Well, and I think that's where we really find a lot of the answers. And people think, well, you're just stuck in the past. And no, this isn't about being stuck in the past. This is about being able to build something much better for the future by being aware of it. So that's what I think is the most important thing to come out of it. <laughs> I'm working on it, okay? The bar always has to be moved up. Well, where would it stop? Where would it stop? It doesn't really stop anywhere. Everything has to be questioned. Now, that's not to say that there's not 50% truth in a lot of it, but I think a lot of it has to be questioned and everything has to be taken with a degree of uncertainty when you're looking into it. I mean, they say trust, but verify, but really that's what it boils down to. You do need to trust and verify on your own and it's ultimately up to you. Well, that's part of it. And just remember that a lot of things that you're told are just things that you're told, just so you'll focus on them and think about them. <laughs> oh, that sounds about right. Good grief. Yeah, back when they were pushing smoking, that really changed uh, in the last 10 years, didn't it? Now it's all vaping instead of smoking. <laughs> oh, don't worry. We'll get to all that. We'll get to all that. All right. So that concludes the photos. I'll be sure I get those posted on Reddit here in the next couple of days. Well, look at that. Someone else watching my favorite movie. It does look like a flying devil's tower, doesn't it? So I'm still trying to figure out what to do with movie reviews. I'm probably going to look to start that uh, secondary channel, or maybe I'll just take requests and go that way. So I pretty much covered all the main movies that I wanted to cover, but I know there's still requests out there. Oh yeah. Nice symbol there too. I like that. And welcome. Oh yeah. QCZ. Love it. Yeah. It's, it's a sad story, isn't it, Kat? And I think it's important for us all to remember that they do still treat people that way. And, you know, there are times that they'll have people treated that way because that's how they think they can treat people. So Okay, Mr. LiDAR, don't worry. Hey, look, I'm, I'm doing some damage with, of all things, a drone, and I'm not even a fan of drones, okay? So just, just hang in there. We'll get there. We'll get there. I know you like your LiDAR. <laughs> so, all right. Well, uh, coming up this week, uh, the explorations, uh, we're going to get overseas a little bit. Got some cities that we're going to do on the east side of the Atlantic this time. So we're going to be taking a look at that. And then I'm continuing uh, some independent explorations, uh, looking into some old libraries. So that's what we got coming up. Good to see you, Sky Sage. Oh, yeah, quite a few of them. Before or after they tanked the plot, quite intentionally. Yeah, we don't need to talk about that. So. <laughs> But that's what we got coming up on uh, the upcoming exploration. So hope you're looking forward to it. And as always, if you have requests or if you want to contact me, feel free to hit me up in the comments. You can hit me up on Reddit or on Twitter and the channel email. And I'm always open to anybody and everybody. So, oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, just looking to vary things up a little bit. There's a laundry list of topics that I've wanted to look at. Another one coming up, I'm probably going to look into the arcades because we come across a few arcades and I joked about the one in Atlanta and then uh, somebody got on me for not talking about the one in Nashville. Like I didn't talk about the Nashville one because it's one of the nicest ones that looks like some of the other ones. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. What do we got here? Very likely. Very likely, Chassis. Although the best way to know is to actually go to it. And I haven't been to the Isha Institute in Tennessee recently. So, well, it's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. 
Oh, really? You still going off on those dinosaurs? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a lucrative business, too. <laughs> so, all right, everyone. Well, they're going to close it down for the night, at least uh, night for me. But I hope you enjoyed this live stream and uh, we'll possibly do one next weekend. I did have a uh, joint exploration scheduled with old world exploration, but uh, we had to reschedule that, but that's coming soon. So we'll get the invite on that out early. So you can get it on your calendars and make sure that uh, you were there. Cause I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And I love working with old world exploration. He's a wonderful explorer and he really knows the details and he knows the buildings backwards and forwards. And he's been doing it a little longer than I have. So it's always fun to work with him and share that with all of you. So I hope you enjoyed the exploration and you are correct, Sky Sage. We are not sure of our true timelines, but we're working on it. What was the thing that opened my eyes? Hmm. The Iowa State Capitol. Why do you think I constantly go back to it? It was the Iowa State Capitol going inside of it. So, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. And I hope you all have a good night, good weekend, wherever you are. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next live stream, the next exploration. Thank you very much. And one final note, be sure you hit that like button before you depart if you have not already done so. All right, everybody, have a great night. Take care.